Danny Sarek here with the Arizona Cardinals Walter Payton Man of the Year tackle Kelvin Beecham. Kelvin, congratulations. Thank you. Owner Michael Bidwell presented the award <laughs> to you after practice in front of all your teammates yeah. who nominated you. How gratifying is it to be recognized by your teammates for your efforts in the community? I think it's one of the, the I mean, it's kind of unexplainable, honestly, to be able to gain the respect of your peers. One is hard. Uh, we, very, we have a very tough locker room. We get after each other quite a bit. Uh, so to be able to have an award like that presented in front of my peers is, uh, is special, it's special. This award goes to somebody who makes a difference, not only on the field, but also in the community. You're very active, you're very intentional about the ways you give back. What's the significance behind your hands-on approach? You know, I think you have to be uh, in the weeds. You know, you have to be at the ground, uh, grassroots level, uh, being able to just be able to impact people where they are. Um, and you can't do it virtually, you can't do it. Um, you know, from a, a building like this, you got to actually go out into the community, go and see the people, go and meet the people, uh, go and serve the people. And I really take pride in just being able to serve others. Throughout your career, no matter where you've been the last decade, volunteering at food banks has really been a priority for you. Where does the passion behind food distribution come from for you? You know, the thing is we were raised, um, food insecure is what they call it now, but it were below the poverty line, the national poverty line and we leaned on government assistance. Um, we leaned on the, the women's, infants, and children's program, which is called WIC. Um, so I understood what it was like to be able to have uh, government-based assistance. So to be able to go and serve at these food banks, to be able to serve some of the same people that I knew uh, I benefited from and serve you know, some of the, the, the same type of issues and, and symptoms of food insecurity, to be able to do that in a very holistic way. And it's also humbling. You know, it brings you back down to reality. It's one thing to be able to play this great game and play the game that we love and, and get the recognition that we get on a national and global scale, but to be able to, to have that very uh, grounding moment uh, to be able to go into a food bank is super special. When you work with the younger generation, you work on closing the digital divide, making sure kids have access to internet and technology. You also help provide minority access through STEAM programs and ways for them to get into those careers. How have you seen those initiatives enrich and better the lives of those kids? You know, the thing is at the end of the day, we want to be able to see these kids have great careers. I say this all the time, and I should trademark this at some point, but everybody can't go pro in football, but everybody can go pro in STEM. And I truly, firmly believe that, because if we empower our young people with the tools that are necessary to have great careers in science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, I really feel that it's gonna allow them to be a positive contributor to the global economy. But you can't be able to talk about STEM and STEAM if you don't have access to the internet. And that's why you know the, 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 the conversations around um, equity uh, within education and the conversation around uh, closing the digital divide is so important because we can't talk about those education resources if you don't have access to the internet. You're in your second season now with the Cardinals. How have you brought this passion to giving back to the local community here in Arizona? You know, it's been interesting because Arizona is such a, a big state and so so much going on here. So one has been able to, to serve at the United Food Bank, which I've been super happy about. Uh, that team over there has allowed my wife and my daughter to come over there and serve alongside me. So that has been super cool. And then right now we're working on some of the things where we're able to give these distributions and, and have distributions around technology to some of these schools where, you know, those who don't have access to laptops or um, or computers, we're able to start providing those things. So it's been cool. And then it's also been cool to uh, leverage some of my partners. So Donors Choose uh, is an organization that works around uh, teachers, being able to supply the resources to teachers, which I think is a vital part of education. So I've been able to, to, to utilize those resources as well. You've also started helping out globally. I know that providing clean drinking water overseas is something that's really piqued your interest as of late. What sparked that interest to want to help out on an international level? Yeah. The thing is, is you know, it's, it's interesting when you, when you really look at the grand scheme of things. You can't be able to talk about food insecurity or um, the ability to not have clean food if you don't have access to water. So here in America, you know, I talk about food distribution, well, food insecurity, and when you think about things globally, I can't talk about food insecurity if we don't have some of the basic necessities, and that was something that I saw when I went to Honduras. This is not something that I'm just doing while I'm playing. I'm setting these things up and laying the foundation for work that I'm gonna be doing long after playing football. This is not the first time you've been nominated for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. In 2018, when you were with the Jets, you were also nominated by your teammates. Your family is very active with you when you go out into the community. What type of legacy do you hope to leave behind based on your, your efforts yeah. serving the community? You know, the thing is, I don't know what that, that legacy is gonna look like. You know, for me, it's being able to serve and just being a man of integrity. Um, if I die and, and that's what's said about me, I think I've, I've lived a, a really good life. 
Your teammates here at the Arizona Cardinals have now nominated you for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award as well as the Pro Bowl in the last few weeks. So they recognize you for who you are as a player on the field and also who you are as a person off of it. What does that tell you about the type of impact you have in that locker room? You know, the thing is you just come out here and work. And guys and, and, and staff and uh, the people, the coaches, they see that. Um, and to be able to just come out here and do the same things over and over, sometimes it can be remedial, but to be able to come out here and do the same thing, grind, day in and day out. People see that and I think, you know, now it's, it's great to be recognized for it. But again, to be able to have that respect from your peers is so important. Something that, um, you know, it's taken 10 years to get to this point. So i um, super excited about it, super grateful, um, super thankful. Um, had no idea that in year 10, these would be the, the types of conversations and the types of things that would be happening. So I'm just honored that, that I'm having the success on the field and off the field. That success on the field, this offensive line has really been an anchor dealing with a lot of adversities. There's only been one offensive lineman who hasn't missed time due to injury, yet this group has still blocked for the second most rushing touchdowns, top offense in the league. What does that say about the ability behind the depth and the starters on this offensive line to handle adversity? Well, first, I got to give it up for, for DJ Humphreys. He should be in the Pro Bowl. He's the only, only player who's played, I think, almost every single snap this year. Um, he's the only person that stayed in, in the game and not gotten hurt. So we got to give it up for, for DJ Humphreys, um, who's, who's playing at a Pro Bowl level this year, first and foremost. But I think it's, it's uh, and also um, a huge kudos to Sean Kugler, um, our offensive line coach. He's done a phenomenal job of putting us in a great position to be successful week in and week out, no matter who we put in. And then I think you guys are talking about the depth. The guys in the room love each other. We want to support each other. We want to find a way to, to get a win. And then we got a, we got a great skill group, one of the best skill groups in the National Football League, receivers, running backs, quarterbacks. So to be able to allow them to do what they do best throw touchdowns, run for touchdowns. Um, that's what we do. So i um, excited for what the offensive line is doing. Um, you know, we don't get much credit. We get credit when we win. We don't get credit when we lose. So we got to find a way to keep doing it. The NFL's Walter Payne Man of the Year will be announced ahead of the Super Bowl at the NFL Honors. You can vote for Calvin Beecham on Twitter using, using the hashtag WPMOYChallenge, along with his name for Calvin Beecham. I'm Danny Serac.